To my fellow hell divers, it seems like Arrowhead CEO Johan and the creative director are stirring up some excitement lately. After a brief hiatus, they're back with a vengeance. With the community failing our first major order, a new one has been issued by Game Master Joel. Johan teasing a balance patch in the near future, roadmap updates, and more. Plus, there's an exclusive interview with PC Gamer that I'll be getting into. Stick around as we take a look at all the latest news and what it means for the future future of Helldivers. This will be the first of many for coverage on the game. First, we unfortunately failed our first major order as a community. Despite the valorous efforts of the Helldivers, automaton marauders have invaded Super Earth territory. Patriotic citizens mourn as their sufficiently sized homes burn to the ground. Super Earth citizens demand justice and they will receive it. But for now, the terminated control system is ready for activation. I don't know about you guys, but those automaton escort missions were literally no joke. I remember running this on extreme, not by choice, but you know, a buddy of mine decided to put us in there like that and we got our asses kicked. Now our new order has been issued and we have less than 4 days and counting to prevent the outbreak from the Terminids and liberate the Veiled for 45 medals. Unfortunately it sucks that we still haven't gotten personal orders to obtain more medals so this is a really good chunk right here for it being a major order. Now in response to someone on Twitter, Johan said that we are looking at data and doing a balance patch. You would be surprised to learn that while the breaker scores more kills, it is not overrepresented in missions that end in success. So if that's the case, let me know what weapons do you guys like running on suicide or higher difficulties. I normally go with the Liberator Penetrator, but I definitely want to unlock the final gun that's on page 10. I don't remember what the name of it is. I believe is it the Scorcher? I thought it looked kind of cool because it kind of reminds me of the Vector. If you're familiar with that gun, you know, I play a lot of Call of Duty, so, you know. <laughs> or, um, what's another gun in Destiny that it actually kind of reminds me of? It was a fusion rifle. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know the name. But yeah, that's, that's what it makes me think of. So anyways, for those who missed it, PlayStation Access did an interview with Arrowhead's deputy game director, Cigar Baru where he shares with us that those at Arrowhead are big tabletop RPG fans that influence the game's universe and gameplay, which gives us a really unique experience in Helldivers 2, especially if you've been playing this game since launch. There's a story that's unfolding in real time. So here's the breakdown of the key points covered in that PC Gamer article. They managed to captivate its player base by integrating dynamic and evolving galactic war, which is much more than just a battle backdrop or a mission selector at first glance. This war is carefully orchestrated by Game Master Joel and has fostered a deep investment among players in the fate of their favorite planets, transforming the conflict into a central aspect of the game's appeal. And I quote, There's been some sudden moments where maybe one planet was just too easy or one was too hard, and Joel had to get up in the middle of the night to give the automatons a bit of reinforcements so players don't take the planet too quickly. Johan stated. Johan revealed to PC Gamer that the existence of Game Master Joel, whose responsibility is to oversee the progression and the dynamic of the Galactic War within Helldivers 2, this allows for a more direct influence over the game's experience with the power to adjust game's dynamic in real time based on the player's action and the overall direction of the war. However, Johan did explain a bit more on this on Twitter, saying that this is a community-wide since they don't have the ability to affect our individual games. We have a lot of systems built into the game where the game master has a lot of control over the play experience. It's something that we're continuously evolving based on what's happening in the game. As a part of the roadmap, there are things that we want to keep secret because we want to surprise and delight. For me, hearing all of this, it's music certainly to my ears, and I think that AAA publishers, studios, much to be taken away here from this is what live service should be. I feel like Arrowhead really got something great here. And the development of Helldivers 2 is heavily inspired by the collaborative and reactive storytelling found in Dungeons & Dragons, aiming to replicate this experience on a massive scale for millions of players. Despite the challenge of 
of personalizing the experience for each player, the goal is to introduce twists and turns that engage the entire player base. The Galactic War feature here in this is not static and it evolves based on players' action leading to real-time adjustment by Joel. An example provided included the introduction of automaton invasions in response to player efficiency, requiring the Game Master to balance the game dynamically. The war has sparked significant player investment in individual planets as we have seen, such as memorable Mevlon Creek highlighting the community's attachment to the game's virtual locales. Arrowhead aims to treat planets more like characters moving forward, allowing the community emotional connection to these digital spaces. So we might see the return of Mevlon Creek once more, but who knows? Johan emphasizes the importance of the feedback loop between player and developers, a philosophy rooted in his experience as a modder for Quake and Half-Life, which I didn't know, which is pretty cool. Looking ahead, Arrowhead is focused on continuous game development driven by community feedback with hints at the future content that could redirect players to previous conflict or introduce new challenges and equipment. You had like this really good connection between developing the games, releasing new updates, play testing it with a very tight knit group, and then deploying it to a larger audience. But that continuous improvement, that continuous development, and just being able to surprise people and get that immediate feedback from them, appreciating the content we're putting up has been such a staple to me and how I view games as something that should be developed together with the community. I think there's a lot to be taken here seeing Helldivers 2 success from Arrowhead. Arrowhead has an innovative approach to game design in Helldivers 2, where the integration of a game master role and the emphasis on dynamic storytelling and player engagement have created a uniquely immersive and evolving gameplay experience. This method not only enriches the game's narrative depth, but also strengthens the bond between the game developer and the player community, setting a precedent for future game development strategies. Moving forward, I think that this is going to impact the gaming industry, or at least I hope so, whether it's indie, double A, or triple A studio or publisher, you know, it changes the way that they will approach live service games. I feel like Arrow has, has an absolute gem right here with times where we see like predatory microtransactions and stuff. And then just the community involvement too, from the memes, uh, everything else in between, you know, it's, it's been great to see all the lore that has been added to the game. So with that being said, if you made it to the end of this video, I'd appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for all things Helldivers. But if you're really digging the content, you'd make my day by clicking the card at the end of this video. And as always, thanks for watching.